Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the Jan 2015 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. So as per usual, we take a read of the question. It says, Queller True Life, an insurance agency, earns commissions on policies sold. The firm operates from a building which it rents from citizens' realtors. Queller True Life's accountant, Mary Jane, reports the following information for the period ended 31st December 2014. So we have some information about commissions. Now commissions in this case is a revenue. So commissions received and paid into bank, 351,600. Commissions to be collected, 28,200. Commissions received in advance, 19,400. Okay, and the rent, now it rents from citizens, realtors. So rent is an expense, so rent paid, 46,650 rent owing to landlords 17,150 so they want us to do a t account for each of the items below well above um, in the space provided below all right so let's take a look at the commissions account first so remember commissions is a revenue so with the revenue the amount received will go will be debited to bank because we're receiving money if you receive money your bank is going to go up as an increase bank is an asset to record an increase in an asset you have to debit the asset account which means debiting bank and if you're debiting bank you have to credit where the money came from which means crediting the commissions account so on the credit side here you are going to see bank 351,600 now we have two other items it says commissions to be collected 28,002 now that at the end of the year commissions to be collected means commissions outstanding that's accrued revenue, which is like debtors, which is an asset. And that's going to have a debit balance brought down. All right, so on the debit side, you're going to see accrued balance brought down. Now, before you can be brought down on the debit side, you have to be carried down from the credit side. So with the commissions received in advance, that is a prepaid revenue, which is a current liability. And that's going to have a credit balance brought down here. But of course, before you can be brought down on the credit side, you have to be carried down from the debit side. Now, that's about all the information for this item, but we see it clearly there's a missing figure. That's going to be the income statement figure, or in this case, commissions earned of 360400 So this is really about just entering the information and balancing it off and knowing that you had to find the income statement figure. Okay, so that's the commissions account. Let's take a look at the rent account now. Okay, so for rent, we just had these two items. Rent paid, 46650 Rent owing to landlords, 17150 so the rent paid would be credited to bank or cash because if you're paying, it means your asset is going down. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. But it's an expense and money is going here. So you have to debit the rent account right, for the amount of 46650 Similarly, rent owing to landlord, that's an accrued expense. An accrued expense is a current liability which will be brought down on the credit side. But prior to being brought down on the credit side, you have to first be carried down from the debit side which means that the balancing figure is the rent expense figure of 63,800. Okay, so let's shift gears now and take a look at the second part of the question. Okay, so it says that Quella True Life owns the following assets, both of which were purchased on 1 Jan 2013. Mark that year, 1 Jan 2013, all right. So we have two assets, vehicles and office equipment. Each one has a different method of depreciation. Vehicles has a reducing balance method, office equipment straight line method. Right. The percentage or the depreciation rate per annum is 25% for vehicles and 15% for office equipment. And the cost of each item respectively is 200,000 and 78,500. Now, it says here, taking the date of purchase into consideration, complete the form provided below to show the annual depreciation and net book value of both assets as at 31st December 2014. So let's take a look at that particular form. So it starts off with the information that was given to us above, but of course now it's, it's kind of going on in columns, one column for vehicles, one column for equipment. We have a working column here, and at the bottom we have depreciation for the year ended 31st December 2014, and net book value as at 31st December 2014 as well. So let's go back up to the information and let's start populating these items in, sorry, let's start populating the information in the table. Okay, so for the working, what they want us to show is the depreciation expense for both of these items for the year ended 31st December 2014 and the net book value at, at that day too. Now net book value is cost minus the total accumulated depreciation up to that point in time. Now remember how they said that these assets were bought Jan 1st, 2013? That means 31st December 2014 is two years later. 
So we're going to have to show the depreciation charges for both of these assets for two years. Let's take a look at the vehicles first. Now vehicles was depreciated using the reducing balance method at a rate of 25% per annum. The initial cost is 200,000. Now for the reducing balance method, we have to subtract to find the depreciation expense for any year is the depreciation rate multiplied by the net book value at start. Net book value is cost minus any accumulated depreciation on the asset thus far in its life. In 2013, when we now buy the asset, we're not going to have any depreciation. So the net book value at the start for the vehicles is going to be the same as the cost. The depreciation is going to be 25% of that, which is 50,000. And the net book value at N is therefore going to be $150,000. So for the net book value at the start of 2014, that same 150 is going to be used. The depreciation is going to be 25% of that, which is 37,500, which means that the net book value at end is going to be 112,500. So the answer for this item, this, the vehicles, will be the 37,005 for the depreciation expense for the year ended 31st December 2014. And the net book value at the end of that same year is 112,500. What we're going to do now is take a look at the straight line method. So I'm just going to take out the information for the vehicle. I'm going to put it back after so we can kind of more clearly see the information for the equipment. So equipment was depreciated at a rate of 15% under the straight line method, starting with a cost of 78,005. Now under the straight line method, the same amount for, is charged for depreciation every year and it can be taken as the percentage multiplied by the cost. So in this case, for straight line, the net book value at start is the cost. That's what they mean here, right? And we're going to multiply 15% by 785, and that's going to give us 11,775, which gives 66,725 for the net book value at end. Now we're going to take that same net book value and then depreciate it by the same 11,775. We're not going to find 15% of the 66,725 because this is the straight line method and the straight line method charges the same amount for depreciation every year over the assets useful life so the amount charged in the first year is charged over every other year for the asset for, for its useful life and the final figure for the net book value will be 54,950 so the answers in this case for the equipment would be uh, 11,775 for the depreciation expense for the year ended 31st December 2014 and the net book value as at that same date is 54,050. So let's just see all the information together for both assets at the same time. Right now again, you could have done this using different methods of working. There's no one right way to do the working and you would have gotten the same amount of marks once your workings were correct. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so for the last part of the question, it says include all relevant information, including, sorry, all relevant information from A and B, prepare the balance extract for Quella True Life as at 31st December 2014 under the following section heading. So fixed assets, current assets, current liabilities. So of course we know now we call fixed assets non-current assets. I assume they mean the balance sheet extract for Quella True Life Limited. Um, so what we're going to do, let's, let's, let, let me split my screen in a couple of pieces so we could see information to populate these things. Okay, so please don't forget to head up your statements so Quella True Life Balance Sheet Extract as at 31st December 2014. Right, so they said the non-current assets section. So we only know of two non-current assets for Bella, uh, Quella True Life, sorry, uh, the vehicles and the equipment. So right, we're going to head that up here. So we're going to see it for the vehicles. The cost is 200,000. Now, where did the 87,005 come from for the depreciation for the vehicles, right? So that's gonna be the sum of the two amounts of depreciation for 2013 and 2014 being 50,000 and 37,500 respectively, right? So when you subtract that, of course, from 200,000, you're gonna get the same 112,500 as we see down here, which is the net book value at the very end of 2014 for the vehicles. Similarly, for the equipment, we are going to see 78,500 minus 23,530, giving us 54,950. Where did 23,550 come from? It was the sum of the two depreciation figures for equipment being the 11,775 um, by two, because remember it's a straight line method, so it's the same amount for depreciation for both years. So of course, when we subtract the 23,550 from the 78,005, that's gonna give us a net book value of 54,950 54, at the end of 2014. And of course, what we do is we simply total up everything there to give us 
278.5 for the cost, 111.50 for depreciation, and net book value is some of those two items there. Now, current assets. Let me just scroll up a little bit. Now, um, for the current assets, the only one I'm really seeing was the accrued balance for the commissions, which was 28,200. But I'll, I'll tell you something a little after. And for the current liabilities, we had two. We had the commissions prepaid as well as the rent accrued. So we're gonna add those two things together and get the 36,550. Now, the, the other thing I, I was mentioning just now is that they were talking about like amounts paid into the bank and paid from the bank. So we should really have a bank balance, but they didn't give us any balance at start or at end for bank, or even balance at start to be able to work out balance at end. So I feel like this, this is missing some information. So if you guys have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear, especially if there are any teachers who have a better insight into what they really meant. Because I mean, honestly, it's very easy for me to say that the question was poorly designed and they forgot some stuff. But I don't like to jump to that conclusion because I mean, really and truly, they may have some twist in it that maybe I didn't see, but maybe you could see. So again, if you did see a twist in it that could give us other information about current assets and or current liabilities or any other thing, let me know. I'm very much eager to learn from you guys, especially if it's stuff I didn't see at first. Right? Trust me, it's, it's very interesting to see things that you didn't see at first, right? Okay, guys, so there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out these videos here. Subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you know every time a new video is released. Check out my website for free POA handouts. There's a link to my Facebook page in the description below for free solutions to math, POA, and math. And as usual, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.